Hi, so it's been about... Hi, so it's been about a year now that I've talked about this film. A lot of my thoughts have changed. Um, I've had a lot more experience with it. I've shot more roles. I've even developed roles at home and scanned them. So let's revisit Ultra Fine Extreme 400. So as I mentioned before, I already made a video about this. Um, a lot of my thoughts are similar, so you can go watch that. But for the most part, uh, I'm gonna go over a lot of the qualities of the film that I like, um, some things that uh, you should look out for, and uh, some things that I've found helpful while I've been shooting this film. So Ultrafine Extreme 400 is currently the cheapest black and white film on the market, basically. Here in Canada, a roll of 24 comes in at five bucks even, which is a, a really great deal. The 100 speed variant is about uh, 25 cents less. So if you're a beginner starting out, um, the number on the box of film is basically your ISO or how sensitive your film is to light. So 400 speed is more sensitive than 100 speed. Uh, 400 speed is a good all around film. Um, you can't really shoot at night, but kind of well lit indoor settings as well as outdoor should be perfectly fine. 100 speed is, is really much more of an outdoor film and uh, unless you have really good lighting inside, um, it's not really usable. So at that price point and at the speed, Ultrafine Extreme 400 is a super good black and white film that is really accessible and uh, pretty fun to shoot. I've been shooting and developing Ultrafine Extreme 400 mainly on my Minolta Hi-Matic F. That's uh, this little camera right here. It's a great kind of walk around um, street photography type film because of its high speed. You're able to capture motion really well without getting any motion blur because the, your shutter speed's gonna be fast enough. So at home, I'm, I've been developing this film stock in Cinestill DF96. I made a video about that. It's pretty much the easiest way to develop film at home. I will mention that the actual quality of the celluloid isn't um, quite on par with something like Tri-X or Ilford HP5. I did find that the, the film was kind of crinkling and when I was loading it into the film developing tank, so that's something to watch out for. 24 exposure rolls are definitely easier to load than 36, so if you're developing stuff at home, it might even... I might recommend the 24 over the 36 exposure roll. This film, um, although it's pretty sensitive to light, you do not want to underexpose it. So when you underexpose the film, things tend to get pretty muddy. You kind of lose a lot of detail. So even shooting this film at 200 or even 100, I think would fare pretty good results. Me personally, I'm a pretty big fan of the kind of um, black and white overexposed look, which is kind of uh, bright and kind of flat. The more detail you can get um, on your roll in camera, the more you'll be able to bring out in post. The contrast on this film is pretty nice if you expose it properly. It's not overpowering at all and um, it yields pretty nice results. Um, one thing I will reiterate about this film from my last video is the grain. Um, the grain on this film is very prominent especially in areas that are um, a solid color, you will definitely see the grain in this film. The developer I used is probably not the best fit for this film. Things don't tend to look um, as sharp as they probably could. From what I've seen on the internet, the grain is, seems to be pretty consistently big and bold. It's definitely an aesthetic choice, but um, it's not overpowering to the point where it's unusable by any means. Kind of like T-Max P3200, I said it. That's fine. I wouldn't really trust this film for any kind of professional work or push processing in particular. Il uh, Ilford HP5, which is kind of the, the main kind of higher end equivalent of this film, um, has lower grain and is more reliable. It has more latitude. It doesn't look as kind of muddy as this film does when it's when it's underexposed. So overall, this is a super great film to 
would be able to practice on. If you're a beginner that's looking to shoot 35 millimeter film and um, this kind of part of your photography like journey is very, it's very important to be able to practice shooting a whole lot and the price point of this film is absolutely unbeatable. So you'll be able to shoot a lot more than you could if you were shooting more expensive film. And even for more experienced photographers, if you want to kind of play around with this film, I think you, you won't be too upset. Just remember to kind of aim on the side of overexposure for better results. Yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching.